जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय निनंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय निनंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद Hare Krishna. Welcome to Chaitanya Pravaha. Today is the 16th session of our Chaitanya Pravaha course, and uh, in the, we are in the middle of the Antya Lila. In the previous session, we covered Antya Lila up to chapter number three, and we'll continue from chapter number four now. So, chapter four uh, describes Sanatana Goswami's visit to uh, Jagannath Puri. So he sees the Lord in Jagannath Puri. So earlier in the first chapter, we have seen how Rupa Goswami visited Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Jagannath Puri, and how he received so much of love and affection from all the devotees of Jagannath Puri, and uh, these devotees even reviewed his uh, work, Lalita Madhav and Vidhagda Madhav. So, and he participated in Ratha Yatra and other festivals, and he received such a great affection from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates. Now Sanatana Goswami comes to Jagannath Puri. So while Sanatana Goswami was traveling to Jagannath Puri, he came by a Jharkhand forest. So when Mahab, when Sanatana Goswami was traveling, he drank some water, and somehow he contacted a disease because that water didn't suit his body. He contacted a disease because of the disease there were some. Sores all over his body. There was oozing blood and pus. And Sanatan Goswami felt very, uh, like, uh, he felt very much disappointed. He felt that with this kind of disease in body, I cannot render any service to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I am already uh, like in a different uh, uh, scene as a different caste member, and then I am not allowed in Jagannath Puri temple also. What is the use of maintaining this body, with which I cannot see Jagannath Ji, and I cannot serve Lord Chaitanya? There is no point living in this body. I will commit suicide. Sanatana Goswami resolved like this. He felt that first I will go to Jagannath Puri, I will take darshan of Lord Chaitanya, and on Ratha Yatra day I will throw myself under Jagannath cart, and uh, on that auspicious day. In the presence of Jagannath and Lord Chaitanya, in the holy dham of Puri, I will give up my body. He has made up his mind like that to commit suicide. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not like this. That he will reveal in some time. So this is how Sanatana Goswami travelled to uh, Jagannath Puri, and uh, so Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, actually Sanatana Goswami goes to. Uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. First, he goes to Haridas Thakur Sat, and just like Rupa Goswami stayed in Haridas Thakur Sat, Sanatana Goswami also stayed in Haridas Thakur Sat, uh, and uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there. And Mahaprabhu glorified Anupam hmm, for his trans devotion to Lord Ramachandra, because before Rupa Go, before Sanatana Goswami came, Rupa Goswami also came there, and uh, Rupa Goswami was accompanied by. Anupam and Anupam somehow died. Anupam means Sri Vallab, the brother of Rupa and Sanat. So he died. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recollected the devotion of Anupam uh, because Anupam was a great devotee of Lord Ramachandra. And Mahaprabhu remembered the devotion of Murari Gupta. Murari Gupta's devotion to Lord Ramachandra also is equivalent to Sri Vallab's devotion to Lord Ramachandra. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that. Uh, a devotee's devotion to his worship of the Lord should be of this standard. So somebody may worship Ram, somebody may worship Krishna. Uh, of course, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tried to change the mind of uh, Murari Gupta and change the object of his worship from Ram to Krishna. But uh, uh, Murari Gupta did not give up the lotus feet of Lord Ramachandra. Although he continued to have his love and devotion to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he He his worshipable deity is definitely Lord Ramachandra. Similarly, Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami also tried to make uh, make Sri Vallab a devotee of uh, Lord Krishna. So once they called Sri Vallab 
or Anupam, those two names. So he called, uh, they called Sri Vala and said, I am a devotee of Krishna. He is also a devotee of Krishna. You also become a devotee of Krishna. Three of us will sit together and discuss about Krishna and worship Krishna. Then Anupam uh, thought throughout the night and in the morning they, he comes and says, I am really sorry, I cannot give up my devotion to Lord Ramachandra. He is my worship to the Lord. Then seeing his dedication to the lotus feet of uh, uh, Lord Ram, the devotees Rup and Sanatan became very impressed and they did not uh, uh, they did not push him any further. So that, that Anupam just uh, disappeared from this planet and uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is remembering that example of uh, Anupam and also Murari Gupta in this context. And then he described the chastity of a master-servant relationship with the Shnuka. Sei bhakta dhanya yena chade prabhura charan Sei prabhu dhanya yena chade nijajan So Sei bhakta dhanya that devotee who never gives up the lotus feet of his worshipable Lord is dhanya. He is really uh, fortunate. And Sei prabhu dhanya who is, who, which master what kind of master is fortunate? One who doesn't give up, uh, give up uh, his surrendered devotee. So in this way, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recollected uh, these two, remembered his these two personalities, and he told Sanatan Goswami, "Just stay with Haridas Thakur and discuss Krishna." Right? Mahaprabhu would daily bring Mahaprasadam, Jagannath Mahaprasadam to these two devotees, Haridas and Anupam. So one day, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu suddenly comes to Sanatan Goswami. It says, my dear Sanatan, if I can get Krishna Prem by giving up my body, by committing suicide, I am willing to commit suicide uh, hundreds of times. So actually Sanatan Goswami contemplated on this. He wanted to commit suicide on the way to Jagannath Puri only. He decided that. But suddenly, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that by committing suicide, you cannot attain Krishna. Okay, Only by bhakti you can attain Krishna. He says, Bhakti Vina Krishna Kabhu Nahe Premodai Prema Vina Krishna Prapti Anya Haite Nahi. So, without Bhakti, uh, you cannot get Prema. Without Prema, you cannot get Krishna. So, in this whole discussion, they very suicide. If, you can, if uh, a devotee commits suicide, he cannot get Krishna. And Mahaprabhu also goes on to say, sometimes a devotee may desire to give up one's life due to separation from Krishna. But that is a symptom of ecstatic love, but not a, not a literal statement that devotee actually gives up his body. It took many days, felt like that, gopis felt like that, but actually uh, devotees never commit suicide. Huh? And uh, also, Sanatam Goswami may be thinking that, okay, I'm, a, uh, I'm from a fallen caste, something like that. But Mahaprabhu says, low birth is not a disqualification for Discharging bhakti unto Krishna. Nicha jati nahe Krishna bhajane a yogya. Satkula vipra nahe bhajane a yogya. Sanatan Goswami never think that low birth is a disqualification for bhakti. Even a person who is born in exalted family of brahmanas uh, may not become a devotee. That's not a qualification at all. And even Prahlad also says, Manye dhana bhijana rupa tapashrita ojaha. Teja Prabhava Balapo Rushabud Hyoga Naradhana Hibhavanti Parasya Pumso Bhaktiya to Tosha Bhagavan the Jayuta Paya Dhana Abhijana Rupa Tapa Shita Oja Teja Prabhava Bala Purushabud Hyoga All these twelve qualifications do not are not prerequisites for Bhakti. So, Viprat Vishad Guna Yuta, the Ravindana Bha, Pata Ravinda Vimukhat, Swapachambarish. A Vipra means a great Brahmana uh, who, uh, like, uh, who has all 12 qualities, 12 qualifications of Brahmanas. He may not attain Krishna Prima if he doesn't have Bhakti. Right? On the other hand, uh, even a dog eater also means if a person born in the family of dog eaters. He can attain. Okay. He can attain bhakti. So Mahaprabhu says that perform bhakti. Navavidha bhakti is there. Only by devotional service one can attain Krishna. And amongst all the limbs of devotional service, Nama Sankirtan is best. 
तार मध्य सर्वश्रेष्ठ नाम संकीर्तन निरपराधे नाम लाइए पाय प्रेम धन सो तार मध्य सर्वश्रेष्ठ नाम संकीर्तन सो अमोस्ट ऑल द लिम्स ऑफ डिवोशनल सर्विस नाम संकीर्तन इज बेस्ट निरपराधे नाम लाइए विदउट एनी ऑफेंसेस इफ यू चैंट होली नेम्स ऑफ कृष्ण देन यू विल अटेन कृष्ण प्रेम महाप्रभु सेस एंड नॉट चेतन महाप्रभु आल्सो सेस that you are trying to commit suicide so by bhakti you can attain krishna not by committing suicide so why are you unnecessarily contemplating on uh, committing suicide so by suicide one will not get krishna and uh, and mahaprabhu uh, sorry sanatan goswami becomes astonished that chaitanya mahaprabhu is sarvagna he knows everything and he becomes very humble and says my dear lord you are you are omniscient सर्वज्ञ कृपालु तुम्ही ईश्वर स्वतंत्र ही आयच्छना चौत आयच्छनाची येन काष्ठ यंत्र सर्वज्ञ कृपालु तुम्ही सर्वज्ञ मीन्स ही नोस एव्हरीथिंग कृपालु मीन्स ही इज व्हेरी कंपॅशनेट यू आर ईश्वर द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड स्वतंत्र यू आर सुप्रीमली इंडिपेंडेंट या आयच्छना चौत आयच्छनाची द वे यू मेक मी डान्स आय विल डान्स येन काष्ठ यंत्र आय एम जस्ट लाइक अ वुडन इंस्ट्रूमेंट मी Uh, means I am not of any use to you, my dear lad. Then Mahaprabhu says, "No, don't, don't speak like that. You know how much service I have kept for you. <laughs> Through your body, I am going to accomplish so many things. Bhakta bhakti Krishna prema tatvera nirdhar Vaishnava ra kritya ara Vaishnava achar Krishna bhakti Krishna prema seva pravartan Lupta tirtha udhara ara vaira gyasikshan." There are ten services that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu kept for Lord uh, for Sanatan Goswami. Bhakti. Basically, Sanatan Goswami is supposed to be ascertaining the basic principles of bhakti, bhakta, Krishna prema, and all these things. And also, he is supposed to write a lot of literature about the sadhacar to be followed by Vaishnavas. And my mother told me to stay in Jagannath Puri. I cannot go to Vrindavan, and I want somebody to preach in Vrindavan. That's why I kept Rupan Sanatan for this service. Okay. So then, Mahab Mahabrabhu, uh, then Sanatan Goswami tells Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, says, "My dear Lord, the way you make me dance, I will dance." Yāre yāichhe na chau se taichhe kare na tani, kaichhe na che ke bana chaya sehan na hi jani. So you are you are like a musician. You make us dance, and we are like wooden dolls. We dance accordingly, right? When you are making us dance, who has the power to just dance? Uh, in some other way okay against your desire my dear lord so then lord chaitanya mahaprabhu said to haridas thakur haridas thakur have you seen this person sanatan goswami he is trying to commit suicide doesn't he understand his body is my property he is trying to destroy someone else's property is it proper uh, sanatan goswami has no claim over his body although it is his body his body is not his body his body is dedicated to lord chaitanya mahaprabhu it is mahaprabhu's body now Similarly, when a devotee takes shelter of Krishna, he is initiated into Vaishnava sampradaya. That body of a devotee belongs; it becomes the property of Guru and Krishna. So one should utilize one's body in Krishna service and Guru service. That's the mode of a disciple. And Sanatan Goswami definitely agrees to it. But out of humility, he felt like that. Okay, this body is of no use for service. He wants to serve only. Then Haridas Thakur and Sanatan Goswami, and saying this, Mahaprabhu left. Okay, basically he disapproved the plan of suicide, and Haridas Thakur embraced Sanatan Goswami and started praising each other. Okay, Haridas Thakur said, "Sanatan Goswami, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is personally considering that your body is his body. His body means not personal body, his property. Your body is his property. So you are definitely a special soul." Then Sanatan Goswami did not become proud of this. He glorified Haridas Thakur, who is equal to Haridas Thakur. You are one of the closest associates of Lord Chaitanya. So I am staying in Vrindavan, but you are staying in Jagannath Puri, right in front of his eyes. 
you are more fortunate you are you are chanting 300000 times krishna's names every day and you are being achar you are being prachar also and mahaprabhu is mahaprabhu has descended to spread yoga dharma and is doing it through you right you are being achar and prachar achara prachara namera karah dui karya tumi sarva guru tumi jagatera arya you are doing achar you are doing prachar you are the best of all uh, all beings and you are sarva guru jagatera arya so in this way sanatan goswami and haridas thakur praised each other and uh, in this way they lived uh, happily in jagannath puri meanwhile all the devotees uh, from bengal came to uh, see lord chaitanya mahaprabhu during this uh, this sanatan this rathyatra time okay then lord chaitanya mahaprabhu introduced sanatan goswami to all the devotees of orissa and bengal both and sanatan goswami received blessings from all of them so and that's after that it's not very elaborated as usual gundicha marjan happened rathyatra happened and mahaprabhu danced and sanatan goswami observed lord chaitanya mahaprabhu danced that sanatan goswami uh, would stay at haridas thakur house and mahaprabhu would regularly come to see him okay so one day uh, la la chitini mahaprabhu tested sanatan goswami okay so he uh, now he says that uh, so sanatan goswami please la chitini mahaprabhu uh, by walking in a uh, sandy path right which is filled with uh, very hot sand okay so sanatan goswami once lord chaitanya mahaprabhu called sanatan goswami it's in the middle of april and may sanatan goswami was called by mahaprabhu and mahaprabhu is staying at yameshwar tham okay so sanatan goswami is supposed to come and meet lord chaitanya but uh, uh, sanatan goswami avoided the cool path which is in front of uh, the temple of jagannath ji but he has taken a path uh, which is via the sandy beach so in the middle of the afternoon uh, mid day and middle of summer that sand is like uh, cool it's burning hot but he has walked in that road only because he felt that uh, if i walk in front of jagannath ji temple the pujaris will see me and i am a fallen person pujari should not get contaminated by seeing me okay so he walked on the path which is very hot and there were blisters on his feet and sanatan goswami did not even notice that because he was so excited that lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is going to give him darshan and he wanted to see him so sanatan goswami did not even notice that there were blisters on his feet and he he just went mahaprabhu noticed those blisters and said my dear no my dear sanatan goswami why did you walk that side and he told the reason and he says you are the you are great devotee these are the characteristics of a great devotee yajjapi tumi hava jagat pavan tuma sparshe pavitra haya deva munigan tathapi bhakta swabhava maryada rakshan maryada palana haya sadhu abhushan so yajjapi tumi hava jagat pavan although sanatan goswami can purify the entire universe jagat power but tomas and tomas parshe pavitra hai deva muni gat this by touching the body of sanatan goswami devatas and muni also become become purified okay. but tathapi bhakta swabhava maryada rakshan maryada palana haya sadhu rabhushan still a devotee like you will just stick to the protocols uh, of this world he follow they follow etiquette and that maryada rakshan uh, protecting that etiquettes is sadhura bhushan it is the ornament for all devotees this way lord chaitanya mahaprabhu glorifies sanatan goswami for his humility and his following of etiquettes okay so then and mahaprabhu would often you see in this picture mahaprabhu would often forcefully embrace sanatan goswami and sanatan goswami would feel so bad that oh my body is filled with this blood and pus and mahaprabhu is embracing me forcefully and all this pus is touching his transcendental body and it's very offensive i am offending lord chaitanya mahaprabhu in various ways sanatan goswami is feeling so morose and he is feeling that he is committing offenses 
But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would forcefully embrace him repeatedly. Right? So one day, Jagadananda Pandit, then one day, Sanatana Goswami expressed his anguish to Jagadananda Pandit. Then Jagadananda Pandit said, Sanatana Goswami, you came to Jagannath Puri, you saw Lord Chaitanya, you saw Lord Jagannath, you attended Rathyatra. So I think you better go to Vrindavan. You don't have to face this embarrassment every now and then. You can go back to Vrindavan. And in Vrindavan, actually Vrindavan is the place where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted you and, and uh, Rupa Goswami to render service. That is Prabhudatta Desha. Prabhudatta Desha means a place which is designated as a place of service for devotees by the Lord himself. So you just stay there and then render service. So then Sanatana Goswami said, yes, very good idea. Jagadananda Pani, thank you so much for giving me this advice. Now that I have come to Jagannath Puri and I, and I know what is my service, I will go back to Vrindavan. So next day, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again came. <laughs> and again came and he, again he embraced, uh, embraced our Sanatana Goswami. And Sanatana Goswami said, my dear Lord, I am feeling so embarrassed and humil uh, humiliated. Uh, I am committing offenses. And actually, Jagadananda Pandit also advised that I go back to Vrindavan. I will go back to Vrindavan. Then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became so upset with, uh, with uh, Jagadananda Pandit. Jaga, who is that Jaga to suggest you? Uh, you are on the level of my guru. You can even advise me. Uh, when Mahaprabhu went to Ramkeli, Sanatana Goswami advised Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, please don't go to Vrindavan with so much crowd. Right? It's not the right way to visit Vrindavan. So you are on the level of my advisor and he's a mere boy. Why he has to instruct you? And why you have to follow his advice? So Mahaprabhu chastised the Jagdanand Pandit. And uh, then Sanatana Goswami felt so happy. My dear Lord, I am so happy to see your love for Jagadanath Pandit. You are chastising him so much. Chastising and love. Because you are always considering Jagadanath Pandit as your dear associate, your intimate associate. You are, you are freely chastising him. You are giving him nectar of your chastisement. But you are always formal with me, respectful with me, you are having official dealings with me and you are praising me so much that I am a Pandit, I am this, I am that. So this is like uh, neem fruits. Okay? You are giving him the nectar of chastisement and you are giving me the neem fruits of, uh, of praise. So this is how a devotee sees praise. Of course, Mahaprabhu's praise is blessings on Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana Goswami understands that. But point is, he doesn't want any glorification for himself. Right? He feels he's very humble and he feels very unqualified. And he glorifies Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy on him. So, Sanatana Goswami felt humbled and Mahaprabhu becomes more humble. He says, oh, he feels a little ashamed. No, 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 Sanatana Goswami don't feel like that. It's not that I have more love to Jagadananda Pandit that I have less love for you. It's not like that. It's, it's natural. natural. I praise you because uh, you are really qualified. Uh, that's why I appreciate you. And I'm chastising Jagadananda Pandit because he just, uh, uh, he just crossed all etiquettes. And he is not uh, proper uh, in his uh, giving advice to you. You are a very elder person and you are very exalted. You are on the level of my guru. How can he advise you? So, please don't think like that. And, and your main problem is that your body has all these uh, itching sores, right? oozing blood and pus. So, don't worry about all that. Vaishnava's body is always transcendent. Diksha kale bhakta kare atma samarpan. Se kale krishna tare kare atma sam. So, at the time of initiation, a devotee gives himself or oneself to Krishna and Krishna makes the devotee equal to oneself. So, during initiation, a devotee's body will become spiritual. How? Uh, a devotee may think, initiate devotees may think, my body is still material <laughs> and I may still have material desires also. <laughs> right? How can my body become spiritual uh, after initiation? Yes, yes. There is an explanation given by Prabhupada for this. So, basically, this gross body is an instrument through which the subtle body fulfills its desires. That's how gross body functions. So, 
subtle body is mind intelligence ego so when the mind has a desire to see something to to do something the gross body will just do the sir do the need film the reflex will take the uh, body to so and so place and the hands will work in such a way that he gets the necessary uh, you know sense gratification which is desired by the mind so like that the gross body functions according to the desires and dictation of the subtle body but when a devotee takes shelter of a vaishnava guru what happens is vaishnava guru instructs a disciple in spiritual subject matters and uh, transforms the subtle body of the the disciple so the mind which is accustomed to thinking feeling and willing in terms of sense gratification starts thinking feeling and willing for krishna service so mind is becoming spiritualized the body and intelligence which is always planning and scheming to get sense enjoyment that intelligence becomes spiritualized by study of shastra and hearing spiritual instructions and the false ego that have that was accustomed to identify oneself as a male or a female or an indian or an american or brahmachari grahastha vanaprastha sanyasi kshatriya brahmana shudra etc etc hundreds and thousands of designations temporary designations so instead of identifying oneself like that after initiation a devotee starts identifying oneself as a servant of krishna gradually it may not happen overnight but gradually it happens thus the subtle body becomes spiritualized and this gross body which is just an instrument for the subtle body to fulfill the desires is acting on a spiritual plane all it is material right now still this gross material body is always engaged in spiritual activities and proper says it's just a matter of time before a devotee attains a spiritual body is after leaving this last material body devotee attains a spiritual body provided the disciple takes the instructions of spiritual master seriously and spiritualizes the subtle body okay otherwise vaishnava diksha which is not given value by a insincere disciple will not transform the disciple but uh, Um, but the disciple may continue with his own material desires so if one takes the initiation process very seriously and sincerely follows the instructions of a spiritual master the body will become spiritual okay eventually uh, subtle body first will become spiritual and then gross body also so now lord chaitanya mahaprabhu instructs uh, sanatan goswami stay here for one more year okay and mahaprabhu uh, further there is a very long discussion actually mahaprabhu says that you are all like my children you and harika stagar are like my children will a mother feel any disgust or some or some kind of uh, discomfort by uh, by caring for the diseased body of her child not at all right same is so my same is my case also so even if your body were material actually idea vaishnava's body is spiritual but even if your body were material i could not neglect it because i am a sanyasi okay i should not be discriminating between what is good and what is bad on a material plane dvaite bhadra bhadra gnana sab mano dharma yehi bhala yehi manda sei sab dharma is bhadra bhadra auspicious not auspicious good and bad on a material plane is all mano dharma mental construction material means is temporary ultimately whether it is good or bad it is all temporary okay anyway as a renounced person i am supposed to be showing some samadrishti just because somebody's body is ugly or diseased i neglect him and somebody's body is handsome and uh, beautiful and healthy i give more importance to that person not like that i should see from a spiritual plane not from a material plane so like that mahaprabhu gives so many arguments and shastrik arguments also then mahaprabhu embraces uh, sanatan goswami once again and cures all his disease and he would transform sanatan goswami's body uh into a very beautiful and healthy body then seeing this uh, miracle sanatan goswami and haridas thakur become very astonished and they are not astonished also because haridas thakur already has heard that uh, uh, my dear lord it's not a big thing for you you have earlier transformed the body of uh, this vasudeva uh, leper also he had leprosy and then he have transformed okay so haridas thakur glorifies all this 
uh, wonderful pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And further, Sanatana Goswami stays in Jagannath Puri for some time. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructs Sanatana Goswami uh, to go to Vrindavan. Okay. And also, Sanatana Goswami, while staying in Jagannath Puri, he meets Balabhadra Bhattacharya. And uh, he notes down all the points. Where did Mahaprabhu go when he is going to Vrindavan? Mahaprabhu travelled from Jagannath Puri to Vrindavan. On his way, uh, what all places did he visit? So I want to know that. So he noted down all the pathways. And Sanatana Goswami travelled in the same path as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and reached Vrindavan from Jagannath. Okay. So this is how a devotee becomes very eager to know the Lord's travels also. So after completing all the activities in Bengal for one year, Rupa Goswami goes to Vrindavan and meets Sanatana Goswami there. And Rupa and Sanatan together perform so much seva. So they compiled various books. And Rupa Goswami compiled one lakh verses. Jeeva Goswami compiled four lakh verses. Vityanand Guru also gives mercy to San Rupa Goswami at Navadvip and sent him to Vrindavan. So that completes the fourth chapter. Now we will enter the fifth chapter of uh, Adhyalila. Very sweet chapter. So this chapter describes the meeting between Pradyumna Mishra and Ramanandra. Very nice chapter. So one day Pradyumna Mishra goes to, uh, goes to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and asks him, I want to hear Krishna Katha. But your Lord, please speak some Krishna Katha to me. Then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, I don't know anything about Krishna Katha. I have heard all Krishna Katha from, uh, from uh, Ramanandarai only. You should better go to Ramanandarai and ask him uh, Krishna Katha. So Ramanandarai goes. Now you see, Kaviraj Goswami begins this beautiful chapter with a nice shloka. Vaigunya kieta kalitaha, Vaishunya vrana peeditaha, Dainyarana veni magnoham, Chaitanya vaidya mashraye. Vaigunya kieta kalitaha. Vaigunya means material activities. Kieta means insects, uh, insects or germs. I am infected by the germs of material activities. Vaigunya kieta kalitaha. Vaishunya vrana peeditaha. Vaishunya means envy. Vrana means boils. So, I am affected by the boils of envy. Vaishunya vrana peedita. Dainyarana veni magnoham. Because I am in such a fallen situation, I am immersing myself in an ocean of humility. Chaitanya vaidyama shrayu. And I am going to the greatest doctor, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When we have some, when we are infected by some germs and suffering some boils, we will go to doctor, right? So we should also go to Dr. Lord Chaitanya, Dr. Chaitanya, who clears uh, the germs of material activity and uh, relieves us from the boils of envy. So envy is one very heinous quality that a conditioned soul often has. And envy uh, creates uh, so much troubles in one's spiritual life. And uh, being non-envious is the qualification to receive spiritual knowledge and retain spiritual knowledge. So why did Krishna speak uh, Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna? Because Arjuna was non-envious. Anasuyave. Idam tute guhyatamam pravakshami anasuyave. So you are anasuya. You have absolutely no envy. And Bhagavatam is also spoken. Uh, is understandable by non-envious people. Nirmat saranam satam vidya. So that's non-envy is a very important quality. So now here you see the non-envious quality of all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So seeing the glory of Sanatana Goswami, none of the devotees of Bengal or Jagannath Puri became envious. Seeing the glory of Rupa Goswami, none of the devotees of Bengal or, or Jagannath Puri became envious. And now seeing the glory of Ramananda Rai, Pradyumana Mishra doesn't become envious. So Pradyumana Mishra came to Lord Chaitanya and asked, please uh, allow me to uh, hear some Krishna Katha. And Mahaprabhu says, I don't know anything about Krishna Katha, only Ramana knows. But you are very fortunate that you have developed some interest to hear Krishna Katha. Bhagya Tomara Krishna Katha Sunita Hayaman. Yara Krishna Katha Ruchi Sayi Bhagyavan. Who is Bhagyavan? One who has taste to hear Krishna Katha is the most fortunate person. He develops some interest in hearing Krishna Katha. is not a small thing. 
so here very fortunate people only can get it and some fortunate people uh, become very much inclined to hear krishna katha right from childhood only kaumara acharit pragna dharma bhagavata so like that to develop some interest to hear krishna katha is not a small thing okay lord chitna have us personally glorifying pratyumna mishra for showing interest in hearing krishna katha so pratyumna he sends pratyumna mishra to uh, ramanandra so at that time ramanandra was uh, training some young girls for some jagannath vallabh natak so now you see uh, as soon as pratyumna mishra went to ramanandra's house his servant came and received him and told him please wait ramanandra will come very soon he is doing this service so this this ramanandra he would massage the bodies of this young girls and he would dress and decorate them and he would teach them finer movements of dance in, in a nataka in a drama uh, uh, and uh, all this is for the pleasure of lord jagannath now you see a pujari might enter the altar and dress radha krishna and or the gopis or whatever the deities and do abhishek and massage the bodies of these uh, deities and then do abhishek and bathe them dress them decorate them garland them ornament them so now there is no lust involved there so similarly ramanandra is also considering these personalities these two girls who are like uh, dancers in jagannath vallabh nataka they are like deities for him and he is also in the observed in the mood of gopis and he is just uh, happily serving uh, other gopis for the service of krishna and these gopis are rendering service to krishna so that is the mood and seeing that hearing that ramanandra is engaged in such an activity uh, this pratyumna mishra became little surprised he didn't say anything offensive he didn't say anything he became little surprised and uh, and ramanandra came after some time after dispatching the young girls he fed them prasad and then he dispatched them and uh, ramanandra came and received pratyumna mishra you are such an exalted devotee you have come to my house and i have kept you waiting for a long time i have committed a great offense to you my dear brahmana i'm really sorry tell me how can i serve you then it's already very late pratyumna mishra said i just came to see you don't worry huh? uh, i'll come another time so thank you so much i got your darshan i'm very happy so he leaves so next day morning he meets lord chaitanya again lord chaitanya follows up very nicely he says did you hear krishna katha from uh, ramanandra then pratyumna mishra said actually i went to hear but he is engaged in this activity of uh, dressing these young girls and teaching them how to uh, how to how to act in jagannath's uh, uh, drama and it was very late i just came back then lord chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, started glorifying ramanandra so much so lord chaitanya mahaprabhu said that uh, see ramanandra is such an exalted personality uh, he is he is so transcendental so although i am a sanyasi uh, when i even hear the name of opposite gender or when i see even the wooden doll of the opposite gender i become there are transformations in my body but ramanandra is so exalted that only he can do like this okay so he glorified the exalted position of ramanandra and told you must go and hear krishna katha from ramanandra you go now again and again pratyumna mishra goes to ramanandra so <laughs> very interesting and uh, ramanandra says we oh, have come again how can i serve you please tell me then he says that i want to hear krishna katha ramanandra says which topic what topic should i speak on <laughs> should i speak on gita or bhagavatam or chaitanya charitamrita <laughs> or whatever what what topic should i speak on then pratyumna mishra says i don't know what to hear only i am so naive that i don't know what to hear i just want to hear something about krishna maybe you can repeat the topics that i have already spoken to lord chaitanya mahaprabhu in uh, in vidyanagar i want to hear the same topics okay <coughs> so ramanandra started narrating krishna katha with so much of devotion and love and seeing so much of uh, absorption that ramanandra had in in speaking krishna katha pradyumnishna was so impressed mahaprabhu ra bhakta ganera durgama mahima ताहे रामानंदेर भाव भक्ति प्रेम सीम सो लॉर्ड चैतन्य महाप्रभु डिवोटीज आर एक्सट्रीमली ग्लोरियस एंड अमंगस्ट ऑल द डिवोटीज रामानंदरे हैज अ वेरी स्पेशल पोजीशन बिकॉज़ ही अंडरस्टैंड्स 
uh, about bhakti and bhava and prema to the highest possible extent. Right? So, and seeing such a wonderful narration of Krishna Katha, Pradyam Mishra became extremely happy. He said, I didn't know what to enquire, but he have filled my ears with so much of nectar. Bhala manda kichwami puchite na jani. Dina dekhi kripa kari kahi ba pani. I don't know what to ask only. So you just speak whatever you feel is appropriate. Whatever I should be hearing, you should just speak that. And he spoke. Then Ramanandra, uh, and Pradyumnusha also says that, Ramanandra, it's Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's recommendation that I personally hear from you. That Ramananda is so humble. He says that Mora Mukhe Katha Kahena Apane Gora Chandra Yai Chakahai Tai Chakahi Yena Vena Yantra. So Mora Mukhe Katha Kahena Apane Gora Chandra. Gora Chandra, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is speaking Krishna Katha through my mouth. The way he made me speak, I am speaking. This is the consciousness of every single devotee who speaks Krishna. It's supposed to be the consciousness. We are not speaking on our own. It's not our glory. It is Krishna. It is Lord Chaitanya. It is Guru who speaks through us. Right? Provided we are bona fide and transparent representatives of the Parampara. The transcendental teachings of the Lord are transparently transmitted for the transformation of common people and we should just act as a via medium. We should not concoct anything. We should not mix anything. So, the transparent uh, transmission of transcendental teachings will create transformation. Otherwise, if one is speculating something and then speaking something, if you don't know something, say, I don't know. Instead of speculating something. So, if one speculates and concocts, of course, speculation is not recommended, but one should do contemplation. Contemplation is not speculation. So, we should Read Shastra. Uh, repetition of Shastra as it is does not mean parrot-like repetition. You should also contemplate, introspect and try to understand, assimilate, absorb and realize the contents so that we can reproduce them in a way that is understandable by uh, the people whom we are addressing. That is there. And we may present with relevant examples and uh, relevant analogies which suit the current audience and all. But point is, one should not one should represent the parampara. The essence of the teachings has to be maintained. Okay. So that's the uh, message that we can get from Ramanandari. Ramanandari is so grateful that he gives all credit to uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay. So now uh, Pradyumna Mishra goes to Lord Chaitanya and then glorifies Ramanandari. My dear Lord, thank you so much that you have sent me to uh, to him, send me to Ramanandre to hear Krishna Katha. I feel so blessed. Right? So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very eager to glorify his devotees. Bhakta Guna Prakashite Prabhu Bhala Jani Nana Bhante Guna Prakashi Nana Labha Mani Nija Labha Mani So uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is always eager to glorify his devotees and when his devotees are glorified, he feels that it is his own profit. Right? And another important theme in this chapter is Sanyasi Pandita Ganera Karite Garvanash Nicha Sudra Dwara Karena Dharmera Prakash Sanyasi Pandita Ganera Karite Garvanash. So, very important point. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wants to vanquish the pride of all sannyasis and renunciants. He himself is a Brahman and a sannyasi. But he sits in the class of Raman and the and hears. Okay. And uh, he came to spread Yuga Dharma. And he uh, makes Haridas Thakur as Ramachari. He made Ramanandra as the speaker of Rasatattva. He made Haridas Thakur as the Acharya of uh, uh, Holy Name. Right. So, one is Sudra, other is like Yavana. And Rupa and Sanatana were almost, almost like converted villages because of serving this Muslim government. But through them, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave so much of uh, uh, bhakti literature to all of us. Right? Nicha Sudra Dvara Karena Dharmera Prakash. 
so he he uh, spreads dharma through nicha and shudra apparent apparent nicha and shudra so that's how lord chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, tries to uh, condemn any caste system or in the sense that uh, giving so much importance to birth right so it's not about ashram it's not about varana okay varana and ashram are external bhakti is eternal you want something eternal or you want something external which one will you give more importance so bhakti eternal bhakti is there in the hearts of even shudra and nicha or loban people also mahaprabhu is ready to accept shri chaitanya leela ei amrite rasindho trijagata bhasaite pare yara ek bindu so lord chaitanya mahaprabhu leela sir amrite rasindho their ocean of nectar even one drop of this ocean can inundate all the three worlds chaitanya charitamrita nitya karapana yaha haite premananda bhakti tatva jnana therefore we are suggested to drink this nectar of chaitanya charitamrita uh, chaitanya leelas uh, nitya regularly so yaha haite premananda bhakti tatva jnana by this we will get prema and ananda and bhakti tatva so that completes the section of this chapter where lord chaitanya mahaprabhu glorifies ramanand rai by making pradyuman mishra hear krishna katha from okay so next another nice incident in the same chapter swarup damodar goswami examines a drama of a bengali poet so once a bengali poet comes to uh, jagannath puri and he meets bhagwan pandit and uh, he wrote a drama about lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and he requested uh, bhagwan acharya to he bhagwan pandit to hear him and he hears him. and some other devotees also hear all of them become so happy wonderful wonderful amazing you know it's wonderful drama but point is there is some philosophical deviations in the drama but these simple people innocent devotees and naive people could not recognize them they were just glorifying very good very good very good if there if somebody doesn't have proper taste buds even if the sabji is cooked in a little uh, here and there <laughs> spaced out manner they may say are such a wonderful tasty sabji but an expert cook will taste it it <laughs> cannot uh, it's, it's not proper okay no pro- not proper recipe there are some traditional recipes uh, of south indian dishes or north indian dishes okay if a north indian tries to make south indian idli uh, or some chakar pongal <laughs> or medu vada or if a south indian person tries to make paratha and all so indians may glorify it but a typical north indian comes and then eats this paratha oh my god <laughs> this is not paratha this is something else so one should have proper taste for it and the food items are fine it's tolerable something goes here and there but philosophical deviations cannot be tolerated at all so the importance of uh, uh, proper philosophical alignment siddhantic alignment and the dangers of uh, uh philosophical deviations are very wonderfully demonstrated in this chapter to the behavior of uh swarup damodar goswami so this Beng- brahmana this bengali poet comes and then he makes everybody uh, here this, this this drama that he has written so then this uh, bhagwan bhagwan acharya comes to swarup damodar goswami this bengali poet has written a super drama please hear that then sarudamata goswami says no you are very naive you are very innocent you are very liberal you hear anything don't you understand mahaprabhu doesn't like siddhanta virodha and rasa bhasa rasa bhasa haya yadi siddhanta virodha sahite na pare prabhu mane haya krodha so mahaprabhu becomes angry uh, so please don't hear anything and everything but uh, sarudamata goswami as a bhagwan acharya says no 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 this is very good poem please hear first and then decide and he started following up with sarudamata goswami sarudamata said okay fine i'll hear bring him and this uh, sarudamata goswami wants bhagwan acharya several times but but uh, he doesn't listen and out of his innocence just he wanted to encourage this boy he got excited so much gramya kavira kavita sunite haya dukha vidagdha आत्मीय वाक्य सुनिते हाय सुख सो इफ आई एम 
hear some materialistic poems, there is distress. If one hears some bacterian bona fide content, and there is, there is happiness. So, now Sarutam Goswami finally agrees, so okay, fine, bring the poet. And the poet starts reciting that shloka. Okay. So, but uh, the poet recites the shloka uh, and uh, everybody says, wonderful, 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 that the introductory verse itself is so great. Sarutam Goswami did not, doesn't get excited. He says, tell me the meaning of the shloka. Okay. And the poet says that uh, Lord Jagannath is the most beautiful body and Lord Chaitanya is the owner of that body. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has appeared in this Jagannath Puri to spiritualize the entire dull material world. So basically this poet's problem is he compared Jagannath's deity to be material body. And he compared Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to a soul, a jiva. Both are, both are very offensive. Lord Jagannath's body can never be material. It is complete spiritual. And Lord Chaitanya is not the soul. He is super soul. He is the supreme personality of God. He is the soul of, of all souls. Atmana, Akhilatmana. So there is a wrong comparison. Basically he wanted to say that Mahaprabhu is the soul, Jagannath is the body. They both have come together in Nilachal. So that's a... He thought that he's very poetic and very creative writing, <laughs> but it's a total rasabhas. Then Sarubdhama Durga Swami chastised him. Uh, left, right, center. He says, Kahan Purnananda Ishwarya Krishna Maheshwar Kaha Kshudra Jeeva Dukhi Maya Rakinkar So, where is this Purnananda Aishwarya Krishna? He is Maheshwar. He is the, he's the master of Maya. And what way, what uh, what about this Jiva? He is Maya Kinkar. He is a servant of Maya. So, we have compared the Lord with the Jiva. We have compared the transcendental body of Jagannath with some matter, material body. So, the people felt very much astonished. My God, we could never understand this philosophical deviation because naive people, innocent people cannot understand all this. So, they only feel that... Uh, something very exciting is there, poetic is there, they just hear, they just hear that okay, something is rhyming nicely. For example, uh, small children, whenever you see something, whenever you give them some nice tasty food item or sweet, they just get excited and then eat it. But they don't understand the health problems that might come because they are very missing. But the parents understand, don't eat junk food here and there. It may sound tasty, it may, it may look tasty, but it will spoil your health. Spoil your health. So then Sarvadhamar Goswami chastised him, uh, gave feedback. But the, the Bengali poet is not an arrogant person. He is a humble person. He is a very simple person. So when, when Sarvadhamar Goswami pointed out the faults in his poetry, he did not justify. He did not uh, uh, defend himself. He did not become offended. He felt humiliated. He felt embarrassed. He felt ashamed. He felt that I have done a great mistake. I am very sorry. He was in an apologetic tone. So that's the hope. So mistakes are common. Sometimes people may not have the right understanding. They may speak something here and there. But one should have the honesty and humility to admit mistakes. And when that kind of honest quality is there, then the mistakes could be rectified. Otherwise, mistakes will, they will be, people will continue to do mistakes. So doing mistake is not a great mistake, but not admitting that mistake is a greater mistake. Right? Doing mistakes are common. Of course, one should try not to do, but uh, this, this just happen sometimes, but one should have the humility to uh, accept the mistake, admit the mistake, uh, then repent for the mistake, try to rectify that mistake and not justify that mistake and uh, try to remember that mistake. Otherwise, one may, if one doesn't commit any mistakes, one may become very proud. But if one remembers that, oh, 10, year, 10 days back or 20 days back, I have done that mistake, that remembrance could make him proud. So remembering mistakes also is beneficial in one sense. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so Sarudamadu Goswami saw that this Bengali poet is a very simple person, simple-hearted person. He didn't mean to offend Lord Chaitanya, 
he definitely didn't mean to offend Lord Chaitanya. He definitely has devotion, but he doesn't have experience in poetry. He just did, and he doesn't have a very deep understanding of shastra or siddhanta also. Out of that, in a sense, he committed this mistake. But he has simple faith in Lord Chaitanya than Lord Chaitanya. So noticing this, Sarudhanur Goswami uh, encouraged. So you please associate with devotees, and you please uh, uh, learn Srimad Bhagavatam in the association of devotees. Then you will be able to write poetry. He did not did not uh, discourage him from writing, but he just just get trained first. Chaitanya bhakta ganera nitya kara sangha tabeta janiba siddhanta samudra taranga. Please associate with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's devotees. Then you will be able to understand the waves of the ocean of Siddhanta. Siddhanta samudra taranga. Such a nice poetic. Way of putting it, so that completes the chapter. Basically, in this chapter, we see Sarvadamadhar Goswami disapproved the mistake of this Bengali poet, but he did not disown him. So he says, "Yaha Bhagavata para Vaishnava rasthani ekanta ashriya kara chitan yacharani." So understand Bhagavatam from a Vaishnava and take shelter of the Lord. So these two things will help you understand the Siddhanta, and you can write very nicely. So he did not say, "Don't write." Stop writing. He didn't say that. You first equip yourself with the right understanding, then you write. Okay. So uh, in this way, and he also encouraged him by saying that okay, even in the great poetry of great people, also there is some discrepancy or there is some kind of mistakes happen. But we should not allow philosophical mistakes. There may be some mistakes in grammar. Uh, there may not be. Very great similes or alliterations, etc. That's fine. Linguistic mistakes are still okay, acceptable. But philosophical deviations are not acceptable, right? Because if this becomes popular, if a wrong philosophy becomes popular, uh, becomes famous, people think this, this is the great thing, uh, this is the bona fide thing. So that's why writing uh, is a very uh, serious job. Right, so one should not uh, uh, write anything frivolously. Okay. So, and he also says that although you have written this verse in a certain way, Mother Saraswati has interpreted it in a different way so that you get another bona fide meaning. Sarvadhanu Goswami also gave a positive interpretation of the same shloka with the same words, and he encouraged him. And this devotee just stayed in. He left Bengal and he stayed in Jagannath Puri and he associated with devotees and he became very sincere. श्री चैतन्य श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य लीला अमृते रसार एक लीला प्रवाह वाहे शत शत धार श्रद्धा करे यही लीला यही पढ़े सुने गौर लीला भक्ति भक्त रस तत्व जाने सो कवरज गोस्वामी कंक्लूड्स दिस चैप्टर बाय सेइंग दैट हियर चैतन्य महाप्रभु श्री लीला इट्स लाइक अमृते रसार इट्स एसेंस ऑफ नेक्टर एंड फ्रॉम वन लीला सो मेनी थिंग्स विल कम ओके सो मेनी लेसंस विल कम सो ही कंप्लीट्स द चैप्टर Now we will enter the sixth chapter of uh, Ankhya Lila, and this is chapter about Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Das Goswami, after he met Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Shantipur, he uh, he continued to stay at home, but he felt separation from the Lord, and uh, uh, then uh, Raghunath Das Goswami uh, acted like a vishayi. Okay. So he is a little longer incident, but I'll not elaborate on it much. So he intelligently settled the financial matters between his uncle and a Muslim minister. So there was some dispute between his uncle and a Muslim minister, and then uh, the minister came and uh, arrested Raghunath Das. And Raghunath Das Goswami said that you are like my father, you are like my uncle. Now uh, you should be affectionate. Sometimes there may be some. differences of opinion between family members also but that should be resolved so like that he spoke in sweet words and then they shared the profit profit properly and then they, he resolved the conflict so raghunath das goswami uh, in this way apparently it sees it seemed that raghunath das goswami is interested in family affairs but he is not he is only externally acting like that so raghunath das goswami several times attempted to escape from home Although he has a beautiful wife like an angel and opulence like Indra, so one day uh, 
Lord Raghunath Nityananda Prabhu came to Pani Hati and Raghunath Das Goswami went to see Nityananda Prabhu from a distance. And Nityananda Prabhu observed Raghunath Das Goswami and said, he called him, come here, come here. Uh, you are a thief. <laughs> you are uh, hiding. I will give you punishment. So you should you should distribute Chida Dahi and Chida Juice to all these devotees. So it's a very elaborate description. Uh, so Raghunath Das Goswami immediately uh, brought so much of uh, flat rice and then big, big uh, uh, container of milk and yogurt and he mixed some fruits and uh, chida. These two containers. So one is chida dahi, one is uh, one is dahi chida. Second is dukda. This celebrated. Some, some song is coming somewhere. Recently, we celebrated this Yeda Dehi festival also. So, like that, uh, Lord Ramityanand uh, Prabhu engaged Raghunath Das Goswami. So, everybody is on mute. Some strange sound is coming. So, he celebrated this Yeda Dehi Mahotsa and Raghunath Das Goswami. At that time, he was Raghunath Das only. So, he arranged several servants to bring so many uh, ingredients from different places. And the shopkeepers also assembled there and they also brought so many ingredients. And he mixed all of them nicely and then he gave two pots to each devotee. One for Dugdha Chida, one for Dahi Chida. And he distributed to everybody, including Nityananda Prabhu. And some devotees sat on the under trees, some devotees sat on the banks of Ganges, some devotees did not find place and they said, entered the water and then sat there inside. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Raghunath Das Goswami and several other servers were trying to distribute prasad to everybody. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and manifested uh, in the middle of all these devotees. And Nityananda Prabhu is just take, going to every devotee's uh, place and then he's going, he, he would pick up one morsel of chida dahi, another morsel of dukdha chida and would offer it to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from everybody's plate. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not visible to everybody. He was visible only to some fortunate souls. Okay. So in this way, Mahaprabhu and Nityanandra, both of them participated in chida dahi festival. So it's a very, very elaborate description, very joyous description. So Nityanandra Prabhu then uh, Sir Raghav Pandit. Raghav Pandit arrived there at that time. So Raghav Pandit laughed. We are eating so much here only. I have cooked so much prasad there for you. Who will eat all that? <laughs> and Nityan Prabhu says, don't worry. I will come in the evening. I will eat that also. I will finish this. I will finish that also. <laughs> okay. So Nityan Prabhu, uh, like, uh, he told Raghav Pandit also to sit there and he called Raghav Pandit. He called for two parts. Raghav Pandit also was given Part and it was a very great fun. And uh, uh, that shopkeepers of many other villages also came there. And they were also contributing, uh, they were also selling chip rice and uh, rice and yogurt and sweets and bananas. Dagna Das Goswami purchased, purchased from the shopkeepers and he made Chira Dahi and he fed the shopkeepers also. <laughs> okay, with whatever he has purchased it from them. <laughs> so for free, by the way, he was not selling. So, Raghunath Das Goswami is a very wealthy person. So, Nityan Prabhu finished eating and he gave some Mahaprasad. He is one Mahaprasad to Raghunath Das and uh, Brahmana distributed the food uh, remaining in the uh, three other big pots to Nityan Prabhu and many, many other devotees. So, Raghunath Das Goswami, in this way, he satisfied Lord Nityanand Prabhu. So, Nityan Prabhu then went to Raghav Pandit's house that night. And he began Kirtan, ecstatic Kirtan. And then feast. So, Maha Nityan Prabhu sat for feast. And again, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there to participate in this feast also. Afternoon also there is feast. Night also there is feast. So, then Raghav Pandit was feeding uh, uh, all these devotees, including Nityan Prabhu and his associates. And, uh, and he fed Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also. And it is said that Srimati Radharani personally cooked in Raghav Pandit's house. So Srimati Radharani is the Supreme Mother 
she received a benediction from durvasamuni that whatever she cooks would be sweeter than nectar uh, so the devotee requested raghunathdas goswami to take uh, prasad and uh, raghunathdas goswami also took some prasad and then raghav pandit mercifully offered raghunathdas goswami the remnants of mahaprabhu nityananda this is how devotees are very encouraging towards other devotees we have already seen in madhyalila how nityananda prabhu ramayananda rai uh, and sarvam bhattacharya were very affectionate towards prataprudr maharaj and they were constantly finding some opportunities where prataprudr maharaj received some mercy from lord chaitanya mahaprabhu similarly here raghav pandit also is trying to give the mercy of nityananda prabhu and Gaurang Mahaprabhu to this Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Das Goswami is also very grateful to all these devotees. And even Advaita Chara also very, was very kind and affectionate towards Raghunath Das Goswami. They understand his desire and longing that he has to unite, he has to meet with uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as early as possible in Jagannath Puri. So everybody is praying. So then uh, there are some nice shlokas in this context. भक्त चित्ते भक्त घरे सदा अस अवस्थान कभु गुप्त कभु व्यक्त स्वतंत्र भगवान सो लॉर्ड चैतन्य महाप्रभु मैनिफेस्टेड इन द हाउस ऑफ राघवपट सो कवरेज गोस्वामी सेज दैट भक्त चित्ते भक्त घरे सदा अवस्थान लॉर्ड चैतन्य ऑलवेज स्टेस विद इन द माइंड्स ऑफ हिज डिवोटीज इन द हाउसेस ऑफ हिज डिवोटीज कभु गुप्त कभु व्यक्त समटाइम्स ही इज विजिबल समटाइम्स ही इज इनविजिबल स्वतंत्र भगवान ही स्वतंत्र स्वतंत्र व्यापक प्रभु सदा स्वत सर्वत्र वास इहाते संशय यह सेई याय नाशन सो द लॉर्ड इज व्यापक ही इज ऑल परवेजिव एंड देयरफॉर ही रिसाइड्स एवरीवेयर एनीवन हु डोट्स दिस टू बी एनिहिलेटेड ओके सो देन लाइक दैट देयर आर सो मेनी सच नाइस इंटरेक्शंस and nice shlokas also so lord nityanand prabhu appreciates and blesses raghunath das goswami this raghunath he has the standard of material happiness which is equal to indra still he wants to leave everything and become a sadhu under the protection of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu so who else can compare his renunciation raghunath das goswami is the best example of renunciation of course all the devotees of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu example of renunciation mahaprabhu ra bhakta gane ra vairagya pradhan and uh, raghunath das goswami is one of the foremost devotees who exhibited deep degree of renunciation so then so nityanand prabhu praises raghunath das goswami krishna pada padma gandha yai jana pai brahma loka adi sukha tare nahi bhai so when somebody tastes the nectar of krishna's pada padma gandha the fragrance of krishna's divine lotus feet then uh, in front of that happiness even brahmananda seems very insignificant that's the nature of uh, uh, of happiness of krishna right so raghunath das goswami consulted raghav pandit secretary and he gave 100 gold coins uh, and about seven tolas of gold to nityanand prabhu's assistant treasurer and then he also gave some small coins for his associates as a dakshina and he kind of blessed him that very soon he would be reside uh, he would be meeting lord chaitanya mahaprabhu so in this way raghunath das goswami receives blessings of raghav pandit nityanand prabhu and earlier advait acharya also so then raghunath das goswami on one fine day he manages to escape from his family so one day one night uh, one night yudhananda acharya comes to raghunath das goswami as he was sleeping so yudhananda acharya was coordinating some a deity worship and the pujari escaped so he told raghunath das goswami can you please go and negotiate with him and then make him agree to worship the deity i don't have any other pujari so pujari shortage is there in those days only <laughs> uh, now you see raghunath das goswami is good at negotiation he already negotiated with the, the muslim governor right and solved the dispute between this muslim person and uh, and his uh, uncle So Yudhananda Acharya, the Guru of Raghunath Das Goswami, he also uh, says, "Please uh, convince him." So then, then uh, our 
Raghunath Goswami says, I will take care, don't worry, my dear Guru. Please, you go and sleep happily. So, Raghunath Acharya goes. Raghunath Goswami, as if he is going towards that Pujari, he just escapes from there. He just runs, 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 like without looking back. He would just run. He took it as an opportunity to escape from home. And on the plea of deciding to go away, uh, he, he said, I shall go to the home of that Brahmana and then I will induce him to come to your house. You don't, you go home without any anxiety. He says that I will go to the house of that Brahmana, but he didn't, he doesn't go to the house of Brahmana. He goes to the house of Lord Chaitanya. Okay. So, Raghunath Das Goswami quickly proceeded towards the east and he walked about 30 miles in one day. 31 miles is uh, like uh, 1.6 uh, something like that kilometers, right? He walked so many, I think about 45 kilometers he just walked in one day. Not a, not driving, but walking. So he uh, then not seeing Raghunath Das Goswami, his parents are in, are in great anxiety. So now he was thinking that Raghunath Das Goswami's father, Govardhan Mazumdar, was thinking that now all the Bengal devotees have gone to Jagannath Puri. Maybe Raghunath Das Goswami went with uh, all the Puri devotees, right? So he suspected like that, but uh, uh, and he had also sent a message to uh, to Sivananda Sen, who was heading the troop. From Bengal to Jagannath Puri. So, but uh, Shivananda Singh told that, no, no, I didn't see your, your son did not come here. So, then he must have gone alone. So, this Raghunath Das Goswami was uh, uh, going and he, he was traveling and he reached Jagannath Puri in 12 days. But he could only eat 3 days on the way. So, hunger was not an impediment because his mind was totally concentrated on obtaining the shelter of Lord Chaitanya. When we are too much bent upon fulfilling one desire, even the body discomforts will not actually uh, become an obstacle. Okay. Then, uh, further, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gladly received our Raghunath Das Goswami at his place in Jagannath Puri. So, by the time Raghunath Das Goswami reached, uh, Jagannath Puri, his clothes were dirty. He was very emaciated. He was so weak. Lord Mahaprabhu. And he told that, You, Krishna is so merciful. Tomara Bapa Jeshta Vishaya Vishta Gartera Kida. So your father and your uncle are like, uh, are they are so absorbed in uh, material enjoyment. Uh, they are as good as. Uh, worms in stool in terms of enjoying material uh, facilities. Okay, So, uh, but thank you for coming here. You please stay under the care of Swarudha Madhur Goswami. So far, uh, till from now, you will be called as Swarupera Raghu. Okay, Swarupera Raghu. Raghunath Das Goswami who is under the protection of Swarudha Madhur Goswami. So, like that, Swarudha Madhur Goswami takes care of Raghunath Das Goswami and then he offers him remnants of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for five days. And from sixth day onwards, we can see the deep renunciation of uh, Raghunath Das Goswami. So, Raghunath Das Goswami uh, would go to Simhadwar of Jagannath Puri Temple and he sits there and begging arms. Mahaprabhu ra bhakta ganera vairagya pradhan yahadekhi pritahaya gaura bhagavan so, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's devotees are very much focused in their renunciation and Mahaprabhu becomes very happy to see their renunciation. Okay. So, now, uh, seeing that Lord Ch Raghunath Das Goswami is begging arms at Samhadvaya, Mahaprabhu becomes very happy. Vairagi karibe sadhanama sankirtan magiya kahana kare jiva narakshan. So, a vairagi uh, he is supposed to just chant the holy names of the Lord and he can beg some food for his bodily needs. And Vairagi Haya Yeva Kare Parapekshan Karya Siddhi Nahe Krishna Kare Na Upekshan. So if Vairagi expects uh, some kind of facilities from other people, then Krishna will think that okay, he is not completely dependent on me, he is dependent on many other people. 
right? So vairagi is supposed to be dependent on that Krishna. Vairagi, vairagi haya kare jihvara lalasan, paramartha yaya ara haya rasyara vasa. Vairagi kritya sada nama sankirta, shaka patra phalamule udara bhara. This is how it vairagi, which renunciant is supposed to uh, spend his life just to see Krishna Sankirtan and just fill one's belly with uh, some kind of very simple uh, food items, right? Shaka patra, like vegetables and some leaves and all that. So, one who is a subservient to tongue and tongue belly and genitals cannot be devoted to Krishna. So, then later, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives some instructions to Raghunath Das Goswami. Actually, he says that. Uh, you should first, you should just go to your Guru, Sarupanandar Goswami, and uh, you should not directly come to me. But anyways, you have come to me, I will give you these instructions. Okay. So he says, mainly two instructions. Gramya kathana sunubhe, gramya vartana kahibhe, bhalana kahibhe, ara bhalana paribhe. So you should not hear or speak gramya katha, means useless, unnecessary talks. Second, you should not eat so lavishly and you should not dress yourself so appealing because he is a renunciant. Second instruction Amani, man, amani Marada Hayat Krishna Nama Sada Laibe. Amani Marada is respect everyone, don't expect respect from others. And chant the holy names of Krishna. Braja Radha Krishna Seva Mara Seka Ribi. And also render service to Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. Okay, within, within your mind. So these are the instructions given to you. Then, meanwhile, uh, Shivananda Sen and all the Bengal devotees came to Jagannath Puri and they informed <laughs> Shivananda Sen informed him about the uh, father's concern, Govardhan Mazumdar's concern and also okay, this, this I will skip. Yeah. So, now his father, Raghunanda Sen's father, he sends uh, a servant and some money and a cook to uh, Raghunath Das Goswami. Okay, you are staying there, you have decided to stay there. So, take these uh, facilities and take these people as your servants and you can stay there at least happily. So, Raghunath Das Goswami uh, took that money and took one servant and he thought that let me utilize this money in Krishna's service. So, he would invite Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, for meals. And he would feed him with the money sent by his father. He doesn't use for some great he uses in Krishna's service. But after some time, he stopped inviting Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya asked Sarudamadar Goswami, why this uh, Raghunath Das Goswami is not inviting me anymore? Then, uh, then uh, Sarudamadar Goswami says, he stopped using father's money. Okay, So, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, very beautiful story. Vishayira anna khayla maila malina haya man. <coughs> malina mana haile nahe krishne rasmane. So if you eat the food given by a materialistic person, then mind will become polluted. And in such a polluted mind, one cannot remember Lord Krishna. Okay. So like that, Raghunath Dasko Swami is exhibiting higher and higher levels of renunciation day by day. So, first he would take arms from Subhadwa then later he would take uh, go to public distribution public food distribution booths and later he would uh, even take the reject grains left by even cows. Uh, like Ananda Bajar like uh, Jagannath Puri's uh, Bajar in the Bajar uh, this Prasadam is sold. And whatever is not sold is just given to uh, cows. And cows eat and then reject some food, reject some grains. And those grains are accepted by Raghunath Das Goswami. He will just wash them and then eat them. So to that degree he is renounced. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very pleased to pleased, and then he uh, he gave uh, Gorzan Shila to our Raghunath Das Goswami. And he also gave a and Gunjamala, correct. With Gunjamala, uh, Raghunath Dostasam thinks that by giving me Govardhan Shila, 
Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu offered me a place near Govardhan Hill. Bijapati Puja Ganda Chhatra Bhavam Prapadya. You know that Raghunath Goswami sings this bhajan. Govardhana Vasa Prarthana Dashikam. Right? So he always requests Govardhan, please give me uh, shelter at your Nijanikata Nivasam Dehi Govardhan. Please give me shelter at your lotus feet. Oh, Govardhan, Giriraj Govardhan. Very beautiful uh, bhajan. Maybe some other time we can do that. So a garland of small, uh, a Gunjimala is also given. So that means he offered me shelter at the lotus feet of Srimati Narayana. So then also Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructs Raghunanda Goswami on the principle of worshipping Govardhan by offering Tulasi Mandiris, eight Tulasi Mandiris every day and some water. And also Raghunanda Goswami's renunciation is increasing day by day, day by day. He began to eat the hard portion, inner portion of decomposed rice even left with the cows. And once Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally comes and then takes that food of Raghunanda Goswami and says, Oh, this nectar I have never eaten <laughs> in my life. This is the most nectarian food I have ever eaten. You are eating such uh, tasty and delicious items, you are not feeding me. So, in this way, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu glorifies Vigilandas uh, Krishna. So, I'm, ideally, I am supposed to be completing the seventh chapter also today. It's 826. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take this chapter also. Maybe I'll take 10 minutes extra and then complete this chapter. Okay, sorry for that. <laughs> so, uh, once Vallabhatta, another incident about Vallabhatta. So Vallabhatta once comes to Jagannath. And then he glorifies Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in various ways. You are an empowered uh, personality. You are empowered by Krishna, you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead also. He says you are the Lord and he is also saying that you are empowered. So Kali Kalera, Kali Kalera Dharma Krishna Nama Sankirtan, Krishna Shakti Vina Nahitara Pravarta. So the dharma in this Kali Yuga is Krishna Nama Sankirtan. And without Krishna Shakti, one cannot spread Krishna Nama Sankirtan all over the world. You are able to spread. Means you have Krishna Shakti with you. And you are Krishna himself. Okay. So, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu hears all this glorification given by Vallabhatta. And uh, because Vallabhatta is glorifying Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu so much, and Vallabhatta also has a tinge of pride, a lot of pride actually, uh, that he is a great devotee. So, Vallabhatta, uh, so Vallabhatta, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu being Paramatma, he understands the pride in the heart of Vallabhatta. So, to humble him, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu glorifies all his associates uh, and he gives credits to all his associates. He says, Advaita Acharya, he is directly the Supreme Lord. He has full understanding of all Shastra. He can convert even leeches into devotees. So I have learned uh, Bhakti from Advaita Charya. And Lord Nityananda Prabhu is Sakshat Ishwar. He is always intoxicated with the madness of ecstatic love. And Sarabham Bhattacharya, he is an expert in all the six systems of philosophy. I have learned Bhakti, Krishna Bhakti from him only. And Ramananda Rai is ultimate knower of all Rasas. And he taught me that Kevala Bhakti is better than Aishwarya Bhava. So, I, from him, I have learned the unalloyed love of Rajavasis. And Swarubhudamadar Goswami is the personification of all rasas. And uh, he taught me the glory of Madhurya Rasa. And Haridas Thakur is a great Mahabhagavad devotee. He chants 300,000 names of Krishna every day. He taught me the glories of Holy Name. So I have learned whatever bhakti I have, I have learned from all these exalted personalities. I'm very happy. Uh, and and uh, uh, this Vallabhatta becomes astonished. Who are these devotees? Where do they stay? Because Vallabhatta knows Lord Chaitanya is a very great personality. But he also thinks that he is also great. So a great person is meeting another great person. There are many other great persons, great devotees. Okay. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu introduces Lord, this Vallabhatta to all these exalted personalities. And he says that many of these devotees stay in Bengal. But now, because this is Rathyatra time, so these devotees are staying here in Bengal only. Uh, in Varisa only, in, in, in Jagannath Puri only. 
So Lord Chaitanya introduced Vallabh Bhatta to all his associates and, uh, and Vallabh Bhatta was surprised to see the brilliance of all their faces. He felt himself like a glow of instead of so many uh, sun-like effulgent devotees. So then like as every year, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu celebrated Rathyatra and he expanded himself into seven forms and he participated in Sankirtan by seven groups and he ecstatically danced in front of Rathya, Jagannath Ratha. And seeing this, Vallabhatta uh, was astonished. And he was convinced that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Person of Godhead and no doubt about it. Okay. Then Vallabhatta, one day, he came to Lord Chaitanya and requested him, I have written a commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam. And I also have written uh, an explanation on the holy name. Can you please hear so, when Vallabhatta requested it like this, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not show any interest to hear uh, Vallabhatta's explanations on the holy name. Because he understood that Vallabhatta is very proud of his scholarship and of his Vaishnava uh, status or whatever. So, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not show much interest in hearing his explanations. He understood that they are all useless. So, uh, Vallabhatta also once calls all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya and the devo and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself for prasad. And he distributes prasad and he feels so happy. And all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also assist Vallabhatta in, in distributing prasad. Then one day uh, he comes, uh, Vallabhatta comes and says, I have written some commentary on Bhagavatam. Can you please uh, hear it? So now Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu desires to vanquish the pride of uh, Vallabhatta. And he says, no, 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 I cannot hear any explanation of Srimad Bhagavatam. I am not a suitable person to hear only. I simply chant the holy names of Krishna and I am happy. Then Vallabhatta says, actually I have given some commentary on holy names of Krishna also. I elaborately described the meaning of Krishna's holy name. Can you please hear that explanation? He is calling. So Lord Chaitanya says, I don't accept several meanings of Krishna's names. And I am very happy that I know Krishna is Shamsundar. And Ishodananda. Sufficient. I don't want to hear more than many names. The Vallabhatta becomes very, very disappointed. He becomes very morose. The Mahaprabhu is just very rigid in declining to hear his explanations. He felt so bad. So this is the nature of a, a person. Because when we don't derive satisfaction in Krishna Katha or Krishna's holy names, we see in, in our knowledge and awareness of the glory of Krishna Katha and Krishna's names. We try to seek some satisfaction in that knowledge by exhibiting that knowledge. Right? So when we understand the glories of Krishna's holy names and Krishna Katha, we should be very happy and satisfied at heart. But sometimes we may seek happiness uh, when others glorify that we know it. Okay. So, uh, glories of Krishna's holy name, glory of Krishna Katha should satisfy our hearts. So, Vallabhatta is not simply satisfied by knowing the potential of Krishna's name or chanting Krishna's names. He is specifically wanting to be glorified that he knows about Krishna's name. Right? So, that, that kind of uh, public uh, claps or uh, appreciation sometimes we may derive and when people try to come to us and then and hear from us we feel very happy and sometimes we are dependent on others dependence on us so when others are dependent on us when others are learning from us when others are clapping and are depreciating us glorifying us we feel a sense of accomplishment and some kind of satisfaction yes at the of first stage one could feel little encouragement but, but uh, if one's survival is dependent on public appreciation, then one's understanding of bhakti is very shy. Mahaprabhu understood that Vallabhata has pride in his scholarship. And another aspect of that uh, pride in that scholarship is expectation of uh, appreciation, expectation of glorification. Right? So Vallabhata's story is a very instructive story. So Vallabhata forces, because Mahaprabhu is not hearing, 
his explanations well about the forces gadadhar pandit to hear his explanations gadadhar pandit is a very simple hearted person so he says that oh lord uh, i have taken your shelter here is this brahmana he is very polite he cannot even say no to vallabh bhatta at the same time he doesn't want to displease lord chaitanya because lord chaitanya rejected his explanation how can gadadhar pandit hear many other devotees also are not hearing vallabh bhatta's explanations but gadadhar pandit is obliged he cannot see no he offered a prayer so now gadadhar pandit uh, became obliged to vallabh bhatta just because he is a brahmana and a pandit sometimes people may give importance to our attire or our position or our external status in the varnashram system rather than person so we should recognize that we should we should discriminate between that is it is this uh, uh, is this uh, honor given to me is for b or for my position or for my varna or for my ashram or for my uh, status so because he is a brahmana gadadhar pandit was uh, giving him more importance and giving him some importance okay so then uh, gadadhar pandit internally prayed to the lord and externally he just heard uh, with a great reluctance actually he was not inclined to hear but vallabh bhatta forcefully made him hear because he could not force anyone he could only force him by this mild uh, devotee so every now and then vallabh bhatta goes to the assembly of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and then tries to raise some arguments and try to prove himself better he was arguing with advaita acharya and many other such exalted personalities so every day he would raise some arguments one day vallabh bhatta went to advaita acharya and says that every jeeva is prakriti right and uh, is feminine in nature and jeeva is supposed to consider krishna as husband pati a chaste wife doesn't utter the husband's name so but you are all chanting krishna's name what kind of dharma is this advaita acharya said the personification of dharma is right in front of you in the form of lord chaitanya go and ask him lord chaitanya mahaprabhu said that you don't know dharma the dharma of a, the first duty of a chaste wife is to follow the instructions of her husband and krishna says satatam dirtayam to mam he instructs us to always chant his holy names so you should just chant and saying this mahaprabhu left and vallabh bhatta was so ashamed he became speechless upon hearing this he was defeated so vallabh bhatta was thinking that every day i am being defeated here if by chance i become victorious one day i will be happy and all my shame will go so but how can i establish my status he is looking for an opportunity instead of taking this feedbacks and realizing his mistakes he is trying to prove himself more and more. so vallabh bhatta uh, attempted to refute sridhar swami one day he proudly went to mahaprabhu and said that i have written a commentary on sridhar swami and in this i have refuted sridhar swami's explanation i have come today have i have written a commentary on shrimad bhagavatam in which i have refuted the explanations of sridhar swami so uh, because he gives inconsistent explanations and according to circumstances so lord chaitanya mahaprabhu smilingly replied one who does not accept swami husband as an authority i call him a prostitute he left and other devotees felt happy because mahaprabhu defended so then uh so vallabh bhatta started contemplating actually when we honestly contemplate and reflect on our own activities and mentality things will be revealed to us parmatma will help us parmatma will help a very honest person so vallabh bhatta honestly contemplated that uh he said he felt that mahaprabhu is very kind to me when he met me at prayag but now he is very strict with me what could be my by mistake so he says that he thinks that maybe i am advertising myself too much as a scholar and i am desiring to be victorious in this assembly of devotees i try to prove myself very great in this assembly of great personalities yeah. so and just like lord krishna subdued the pride of indra lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is trying to subdue my pride so and he is uh, he is actually thinking of my welfare but i am able to understand it he is actually acting for my benefit but i interpret 
his actions as insults. So this is exactly a like Krishna cutting down the pride of Indra. So I am a fool. So our Vallabhata realizes his mistakes and he goes to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and admits, my dear Lord, I am very sorry for my pride. Then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepts. You are a learned scholar. And you are also a great devotee. I, I, I know that. But when somebody is a great devotee and a scholar, along with it, if he has pride, that's a big black spot. So, whatever scholarship and devotion are there, bhakti and, and understanding of Vedanta, Panditya, when both are there, uh, pride should not be there. Garva Parvata, mountain of pride should not be there. So, you dare to criticize Sridhar Swami, you should follow Sridhar Swami. So, out of pride, one tries to uh, supersede or outsmart the previous Acharya. One should follow previous Acharyas. One should not try to supersede them or think oneself or prove, try to prove oneself better than the previous Acharya. So then, the very thought of surpassing a previous Acharya makes one's writings and explanations non bona fide and useless. Right? So if we follow the uh, Follow the teachings of Acharyas, one can write beautiful uh, commentaries. But uh, if one tries to supersede or tries to uh, outsmart previous Acharyas, then the commentaries will become very faulty. Because pride contaminates everything. So then finally, Vallabhata requested, My dear Lord, if you become very merciful upon me, if you have really forgiven my offense, please come to my house and accept my invitation and accept meals in my house. Then he says, Okay, fine. So Mahaprabhu went to, uh, went to him and then also Gadadhar Pandit also met Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Mahaprabhu had some sweet loving exchanges between himself and uh, Gadadhar Pandit. So Mahaprabhu asked, I am, I am uh, neglecting you uh, sometimes, uh, but why are you, why don't you protest? So no, my dear Lord, whatever you say, whatever you do, I just accept it as it is. Okay, I don't have any protest. Gadadhar Pandit is very simple hearted. On the other hand, Jagadananda Pandit is very rebellious. We'll discuss about him in later episodes. So, with this, I'll conclude this chapter. There are many more lessons, but I just give a quick summary. So, thank you all very much. Shri Chaitanya Chirita Amrit Kijayashila.